Hello there, time for my most requested video of the year, finally sharing my nail polish routine and talking you through some of my favourite tools and tips while I paint my nails on camera for the first time. I get comments on my nails on almost every video, by the way the shades always listed in the description box, but I'm not a nail expert by any means. I can only share my personal routine and what works for me, so please don't take this as professional advice, just passion. Nail polish was my gateway into the beauty world when I was young and it continues to be such a fun way to feel more put together, capture your mood, celebrate a season or transform an outfit. I'm very picky with my nails and a bit of a neat freak so I've only had them done in a salon three times in my entire life and two of those were this year when I discovered Olive and June in LA. I've never had shellac, never had gels, I'd much rather do them myself with regular polish. For me an at-home mani is a form of self-care and a little bit of time out. Why would I pay someone else to paint them when I enjoy it so much I'll do it for free? I've usually been a fairly neat painter in the past so up until very recently I didn't have a real routine. I'd just remove the previous polish, file, buff and paint. Done. But not done as well as they could be. Finding Olive and June's tools and tips really helped me step up my nail game this year. Not sponsored, just a big fan of their products, but the brand is kindly offering a little polish perk for you that I'll share later in the video. After revolutionising my routine this year, my nails are neater than ever, the polish lasts longer, and the prep work really pays off. I've had so many nail compliments and messages in the last few months, and was even stopped in the street twice in New York by people asking where I get my nails done, but I do them myself. I always want to work on a flat surface at a table, and I'm getting these tools out. I keep them all together in this little toolbox from Tosca. Everything mentioned will be listed down below. My mani process does take a bit longer now, maybe 25 to 30 minutes if I really take my time, but the results are far more satisfying and long lasting and I find it really relaxing. Put on a TV episode, YouTube video, podcast, audiobook and get into it. The tools I need are nail polish remover, a nail file, a cuticle pusher, a buffer, base coat, polish, a clean up brush, top coat, and to finish cuticle serum and hand cream as well. That kind of reflects the process and sections I'll be talking you through. Remover, shaping, nail prep, polish and clean up and hydration to finish. I start by removing whatever's already on my nails. This is the shade BI by Olive and June and I'm filming this on day five of this polish and look, no chips. I'll be sharing tips along the way on how I make my mani last longer and I'll recap them all at the end too. I sometimes use a drugstore polish remover or as a real splurge, the Chanel nail polish remover is the only one I've ever come across that actually smells nice, more like roses than remover. But these days I really like remover pots that you dip your nails into. There's a sponge inside that helps remove the polish when you twist your finger back Back and forth. Much faster and neater and I find dark or red polish doesn't stain my fingers when I'm removing it this way. The two versions I use are from Olive and June and Nails Ink. My Nails Ink pot is fairly new and I love the slightly coconutty scent. I've used the Olive and June pots for longer but I do find that the sponge sort of disintegrates after about a month or so and you end up with little black bits on your fingers so I'd love to see some sponge refills in future. Remover can be tricky to pack for travel so my recent travel skincare bag video featured these compact little remover pads from Boots, the big drugstore chain in the UK like a mini makeup wipe for your nails. On to nail shaping. Because I do my nails about once a week, they rarely get to a point where they're so long I need to use clippers, I can usually just reshape them slightly with a nail file. My favourite is this OPI Edge 240 file. The shape is really easy to hold and control and I don't like a file that's too coarse so this has a finer grain. I think you're meant to file in one direction with long strokes but shorter back and forth movements just works best for me. Nail shape is really down to personal preference. Some of my friends file their nails to be super long and pointy, really square or very round, one tip I've heard is to try to mirror the shape of your cuticles, but mine almost match the curve of the end of my finger instead. Sort of an oval shape, I guess. I just find that most flattering for my hands. I'm not too fussed about my nails being exactly the same length, but if there's a really long outlier, I'll definitely bring it down a bit. You can see these three are a bit shorter than the others at the moment after a break a while ago, but the other two don't look super uneven compared to them. As long as they're all vaguely uniform, that's fine, and being a bit shorter definitely helps avoid chipping too. Next, nail prep. I think this is the part that really Really makes the difference between a messy mani and something that makes you look and feel like a pro at home. After filing I use this little metal cuticle pusher to gently push back my cuticles. It's slightly curved so it fits my nail shape and isn't too harsh on the skin. I never cut my cuticles, it's one of the reasons I'd had one salon mani in my life and never went back until this year because it hurts when they do that, it's not fun. So I didn't really do anything to my cuticles in the past but a tip from the Olive and June team revamped my routine this year. After pushing my cuticles back I actually buff them. Buffing is a step I've always liked to do 
to help remove any ridges or rough patches on my nails and really smooth out the surface so polish will apply more evenly. I've used a Sephora buffer for years but prefer the finest side of the Olive and June buffer these days. After buffing the nail itself I take the buffer lower down where the cuticles look a bit messy from being pushed back and I'll very gently buff this area too, almost resting the buffer right along where my nail meets my skin. It doesn't hurt at all because I'm not buffing the skin itself, just right alongside it. But be gentle, coarse buffers can definitely weaken the nail a bit and even buff all the way through an end if you're not paying attention, so keep it nice and soft. I'll add hydration back in at the end after I've finished painting. Having dry nails at this point is really going to help my mani last longer because the polish will adhere to the surface of the nail better. So I don't apply hand cream before or during the process, we'll get to that at the very end. To help dehydrate your nails and prime them for polish, you can even paint a bit of remover on with a brush and it evaporates straight away. Make sure you brush away any dust from buffing too. Now we're ready to start painting. First, base coat. Some polishes are formulated with a sort of bonding agent inside, like Olive and Dunes, but I still like to use a base coat for safety. The Orly Bonder is a rubberized base coat. Once it's dry, the polish actually feels a bit tacky, so I'm sure that helps polish stick to it. This was a recommendation from a celebrity manicurist I met in LA, so I took her word for it. On to the fun part, the color. Let me know if you'd be interested to see some of my favorite polish shades and brands in a future video. I use a lot of Essie, Olive and June, Nails Ink, Chanel, Burberry, OPI. Today I've picked a stronger shade, so it's going to be easier to see on camera. A deep red is one of my favorites. This is Essie Gel Couture in Bubbles Only. Their Gel Couture formula is in the curved bottle, but it's not a gel polish, just a regular one, so it removes easily. It just has more shine and lasting power like a gel. Now I never shake a polish bottle because that can create bubbles in the formula, so a tip from my friend Katie from What Kate Finds is to roll them between your hands instead. I like a really wide polish brush, so it covers the nail and reduces the number of strokes you have to do. The amount of polish you put on the brush before each nail makes a big difference. Too much means you're more likely to get in a mess and too little can get streaky, so I'm always trying to be somewhere in the middle. Oh my god, the pressure of doing this on camera. It's like trying to type with someone watching you and suddenly it's all typos. I might be messier than usual with the camera on, so please bear with me, but the cleanup stage comes next so I can fix anything up later. Depending on the consistency of the polish, I'll do two coats or sometimes three light coats. I like to start down low, fairly close to my cuticles and paint in really straight strokes. When you've done all of your nail prep, this is the best bit. Polish glides on easily and evenly. This is my non-dominant hand now, but sometimes it's actually neater than my right hand. It just takes practice to keep it steady. After the first coat, one of the most important things to help wear time is to let it dry properly. I try to wait at least four or five minutes before the next coat. Then the second coat will help things look more even and opaque. I sort of end up doing four strokes on each nail. Starting down the middle, one either side, then one last one down the middle so I don't have any visible polish lines. Then I let that coat dry for a bit longer because I really want it to be almost completely dry before we tidy things up. Time for the cleanup brush. This is the reason my nails have looked so much neater in the last few months. This simple tool from Olive and June is just a slightly rounded brush, mine's looking a bit scruffy now, but it's something I dip in nail polish remover and use to gently reshape the bottom of the polish, particularly tidying up around the cuticles. There's no real art to how I'm tidying this up, I'm just trying to have a really steady hand and sort of mimic the curve of my nail so there's a bit of a gap between the skin and the polish. It's important to let your nails really dry before this step because otherwise you can accidentally push the polish out of shape. You want it to have hardened so you're just softly buffing away any messy bits. One of my tricks is also to leave a slight gap on either side of the nail when I'm painting. I don't paint the whole thing. It might seem slightly strange when you look really closely but it actually just has the effect of sort of elongating my nails. If you paint the whole nail surface with polish it can end up looking a bit wide and squat but this just seems to make them look slightly more elegant. The cleanup brush also comes in handy to remove any excess polish on your skin. If the sponge in the remover pots gets a bit messy, I don't dip the brush in because you can actually end up getting bits of sponge stuck in your polish, so I'll sometimes just pour a bit of remover out into a little glass jar and dip the brush in there. Finally, top coat to lock it all in. I've tried a few different types and they all worked fairly well, but again, Olive and June's top coat has been a game changer for me this year. It's incredibly shiny and salon sleek. It looks like a gel, but it's not, and it really does make my polish last longer than any others I've used. I easily get to day four with no chips, maybe only tiny flaws by day five or six, but sometimes the brand posts about customers who get to day 10 and beyond. Olive and June have very kindly arranged a little polish present for you. This month you can get their top coat free with your order using the code Matilda. Not an affiliate code, just a nice little holiday gift for you from me and the Olive and June team. I'll leave details in the description box below. And now we wait. This is the most critical wait time to make sure the top coat completely sets. I try to sit still for at least 
20 minutes, listen to a podcast, watch something on YouTube. I've used drying solutions like Essie's Dry Drops before, which sort of feel like dropping a bit of oil all over the polish, but I actually think it just gives you a false sense of security and you'll start doing things that might dent your new nails, so I'd just rather wait it out properly. Once that's all dry, it's time to add some hydration back into your hands. I apply hand cream every night before bed, but something else comes first. Olive and June's Cuticle Serum, or Tickle Serum because I've used mine so much the name's coming off. I always found cuticle oil too messy to bother, but this serum has an easy twist mechanism and a sponge tip applicator that glides over your cuticles and I do the sides of my nails too. It's really light and smooth, but the thing I love most is how quickly it absorbs because it's not an oil. By the time I've done the last nail, the first one's already soaked in. It's not sticky, so if there is any excess, you can easily rub it in. Just hydrating the cuticle area already makes my mani look nicer. Then the hand cream. You can see a few of my favorites in my body care routine video, but I might share some more in the new year if you'd be interested, let me know. Something I use a lot is GoTo Super Handy, an Australian brand I love. This formula feels slightly whipped, so it's nourishing, but still light and absorbs quickly so you can get on with your day. Lovely orange blossom scent too. I always make sure I work a bit into my cuticles as well. There you go, that's my nail routine done. Luckily still pretty neat for my first time doing my nails on camera. Whew, I was feeling the pressure. To help maintain my mani for the week, I'll use cuticle serum every day and hand cream every night. And after another Olive and June recommendation, I also reapply top coat every two to three days to help keep the polish chip free and nice and shiny. So to recap my tips for helping my mani last longer, I'd say nail length plays a big part. Going a bit shorter helps if you can. Dry nails at the start of the process, no hydration until the end. Enough drying time in between each polish coat and a strong top coat to lock it all in. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. I hope you found this helpful, maybe you learned something new. If you did, I'd love to see photos of your nails or tell me if you give the Olive and June top coat a try. Send me a message or tag me on Instagram at Matilda on video. Please tell me about your nail polish routine. Did you spot any similarities here or do you have a different approach? Maybe you're all about going to a salon or getting gels or you might enjoy an at-home mani too. Please share any of your sources of nail inspiration as well. I love hearing tips from Sarah Gibson Tuttle, the founder of Olive and June. What Kate Finds is a total mani expert and has a few videos on her channel and I found some great accounts recently like Jaunty Julie on YouTube and Move Mountains on Instagram. Always fun to discover more. Let me know if you have any questions or if there are other types of nail videos you'd be interested to see in future. Thanks for watching. See you next time.